Hey guys. Um, and hey, uh, hey to all the fellow course people in my course and everything. Um, on this episode of The World According to Jeff, I would like to talk about one of my favorite films of all time. It's a very inspirational film. Um, it's called The World's Fastest Indian. In the movie, there is a, it's sort of, you get shown this like very small suburban uh, part of New Zealand, I guess. And um, there's this old man living there who seems to be a bit mad. He just sort of spends all day and all night in his little um, workshop at home, um, tinkering away at his projects. And you meet this little boy, and he kind of uh, is a bit curious. Sort of the rest of the neighbors are like, well, Bert's a bit crazy kind of thing. Uh, but this little boy is a bit curious, and so he goes into this little uh, workshop and investigates. Um, in that workshop, he discovers that Bert Munro is actually trying to build a motorcycle to set the land speed record. So, um, like one of the famous like shots in that thing is the camera is sort of moving in over the shelves, and um, written on the thing is something that's written on the shelf is offerings to the god of speed. And these are all burnt out pistons and broken engine parts and all sorts of things. And um, the fascinating thing is that Bert is trying to build up his um, 1920s Indian um, into a land speed motorbike. So the first part of the story sort of establishes that. And, um, you know. He's, so he goes to the beach at New Zealand and he races some of these um, motorcyclists who think he's crazy and this, he sort of wins them over. And um, they so, because Bert's dream is actually to go to the Bonneville Salt Flats to set this record. Uh, and that's all the way in America. And he doesn't really have that much money, but he's got some savings. He's got his bike ready. Um, and so he sets off for America. And in America, he lands there. He pretty much doesn't really know what he's going to do. He's just got this idea that he's going to go to the Salt Flats. And at the Salt Flats, he rocks up um, with his bike. And uh, unfortunately, he apparently didn't really realize how the salt flats thing actually worked. He just kind of knew that they were there and that speed week was at a certain time of year and he figured he was just going to rock up, ride his bike, set some records and so on. But apparently that's not how things work. They tell him, no, sorry, you, you can't race. You've got to, um, you've got to register like a few weeks before. You've got to, the bike has to pass tech inspection and all sorts of things. But a lot of the um, a lot of the racers have sort of fallen in love with this old guy who's made this thing in his shed and rocked up at Speed Week. I mean, uh, that is sort of the that's the whole spirit of of what Bo uh, of what the Bonneville Speed Week is all about. Is you, know, you can do it yourself. So these other competitors, you know, convince him, convince the tech guys to let him run, um, to at least have a run on the, on the salt and get it out of his system and so on. Because it's a bit hard for Bert to actually go home all the way to New Zealand and then save up again and then make it back to the salt flats. That's a bit ridiculous. So they let him run and they're sort of following him on a pickup truck just to see how he goes and he takes off. Like, like he disappears off into the horizon and then stops and then the pickup truck actually catches up to him the guys get off the pickup truck they are amazed and fascinated with how fast that motorbike run they're like wow man that's like that's so cool that motorbike's really fast you, you did a good job there man and Bert says to them he sort of gets off his motorbike takes off his goggles looks at them and goes well no 
I'm not happy with that run because I couldn't get out of first gear. <laughs> so, all these guys... So all these guys are a bit amazed at all of this. And um, they decide to try and push him through tech inspection, which is a bit difficult because his tires and things are homemade and you know there's all kinds of safety issues. But they let him run. And he ends up setting I think like two or three world records on that day for motorcycle land speeds. Um, the point of the story was that, for me, at least what I took away from that, was that if you have a dream, and no matter how fucking crazy it is, no matter how crazy everyone thinks you are, if you're dedicated enough, then you can actually, you can actually do what you, you um, what you set out to do, and for Bert, Everyone thought he wasn't going to make it because it was like this really crazy, impossible dream. Oh, there's a bit of traffic coming up. So it's like this crazy, impossible dream. Um, but yet he manages to... He manages to, to get through it and um, to not only that, set like a whole lot of fucking records doing it. He subsequently, in real life, went back and set a whole lot of other records. And um, a lot of those records um, still haven't been broken today. And this was done in the 1950s and 1960s. A guy in his fucking shed goes along and uh, builds a motorcycle in his shed by himself. Like, that, that, that I just thought was amazing. He was so determined to do it, he learnt all the skills required to build a land speed record bike. And that's one of my favorite stories and that's always stayed with me. I hope I've told it in a in a reasonably coherent way. But yeah, that's that's that.